Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. Yeah. Welcome to the Bitcoin Podcast. We in out chat. Bitcoins, we got them. Acquire, never sell. But catch us rolling deep like a Dell. Bitcoin, blockchains, cryptocurrency. Three guys faded talking Bitcoin, no fee. That's the free Bitcoin podcast, insane. And adoption is still the only thing, thing, thing that matters, man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 240. Of the flagship show, the Bitcoin Podcast. I'm your first host, Marcello. And I'm host number two, D. I am host number three, Dr. Corey Petty. Hello, everybody. Hey. Once again. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Beginning of the year, being nice and lazy. We, once again, do not have a guest this episode. We'll be talking with our, our guests or our fans, and they will call in via the Slack link that we post we start the show we already have one hello karima how are you doing yeah we cannot hear you so your microphone does not work she just messed me in the slack she said i just joined to listen (laughs) Uh, karima is just joining to listen to get the content early because you can do that if you join our slack channel we had a raw moment there Mm. raw um so what are we talking about today guys what's on the docket well, um, let, we should just embrace this format change. We're not having guests. Oh, we'll have guests. I want guests. I like talking to people. It's just we're not going to force like, guests. We get to cherry pick now. Like, we were go- going into, what, 2017. There are, like, so many people, like, CEOs, like, here's my, here's my broom token. It represents physical brooms and lows. But now, like, we can <laughs> take our time and pick our guests and take the time to get big guests right like uh the winkle by we probably will never get the winkle by but we can take our time with it we don't have to just like force feed guests down people's throats so we just take our time now but i like this format like that's all i'm cool with it so i got some interesting news um that uh so I, i i frequent a lot of security channels so basically people where all the you know auditors of Ethereum and other other platforms and photographers go and stay and talk about best practices and whatever. I I'm in a lot of channels, and um, somebody who I respect came through and like a, 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 in a company and said just like, at first just out of nowhere, uh, Sweet Bridge is a scam. It's an exit scam, and I was like, what? Like I didn't. I don't, I, believe them. I don't expect this person to say things like that unless there's a significant amount of evidence backed behind it and sweet is something that like, we we like we're behind slash we're excited for um i've seen them do talks at various conferences i uh Vinay gupta was behind them he's done pr stuff with them we've had like imogen heap does videos of them and and from the sound of things uh they aren't paying any of their clients like any of their contractors that they that they talk to they aren't answering any emails and a bunch of people uh, uh, like left and quit, and ran it, but they're like you know, social media presence, and, and then like staff is still pumping stuff out. Hmm. And when I've asked around, other people are like, "Yeah, I've I've been there. I've seen places. It seems kind of scammy." Bob Summerwill used to work with them, and he no longer works with them. He's looking for a full time job. As for Twitter tweets, it's just like I I don't have like hard evidence other than hearsay of people that I trust who uh, have have worked with them and aren't being paid or aren't being answered about being paid. And do you, it's, it's how like many that, more Ronnie Moaz situations do you think we're going to get in, in this fallout? Like, I think this year is going to be right? like the year of, of, of people who are incompetent, who we thought were inco- were, were competent and uh, people showing exit scams of the money they raised last year. Um, I I think there's going to be a lot of like turmoil based in 
people who thought they could do something they certainly weren't capable of doing. Um, or same? like just like pure out fr fraudsters or you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think this is the Mount Gox era of Ether? Like for Ether? No. I mean, this is Ether, this like got the, some the Gox Ether thing. In strains to There's, it. Yeah, you know, Mount Gox thing? had like what? A tremendous percentage of all of the Bitcoin talking, inside of it. I'm talking sentiment wise. I'm not talking. I'm talking sentiment wise. Nah, not, I, uh, I think it's going to be fine. No, and I, I mean, who do we know was talking about this? It's uh, Sweet Bridge. Not nah, yeah, but it's going to pop, man. Sweet Bridge was really talked about. Remember, if no, if nobody remembers what Sweet Bridge was trying to do, Sweet Bridge was trying to turn everything into a liquid asset and kind of do away with that worldwide. And they also would allow you to take out loans and store your crypto with them, right? Yeah, and you could basically you could, you could make there. loans based on you could make loans to yourself based and collateralized by your own crypto. Yeah, well, you, you, you your get your sweet stuff. coin in exchange for ether, and then they lock up your ether as collateral to borrow against it. Then they give you bridge coin as your loan, so you're borrowing bridge coin, which is pegged. To a certain price, and then you have to pay back the loan in bridge coin. You get to unlock your ether that you locked up as collateral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense to the layman. Good luck. And it was that. juicy in a bull market if it were true, right? Because you could take out a loan, collateralize your own stuff, then you pay off the loan, but then you get your more, you get your uh, new, uh, more valuable uh, crypto back whenever the price had gone up, and you pay off the loan. So super juicy, but to if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Wait, what, does it, what does it mean if like we can't if even even we can't decipher, um, like good projects from exit scams? If if it is an exit scam, what does it mean for us to like? It means VCs make all that money again because they're the only ones getting the truth. I think if a, if a company is uh, active. On social media that's a good sign and their twitter is all automated uh their reddit hasn't been updated in months um when you say been... automated what do you mean like what about it is automated? What, what, what what does an automated twitter look like for your cello because i don't yeah. think some people can see that i i don't that's why I, I really want to know i'm trying to hone my skills uh so if you go to a twitter page and it's not they're not talking they're they're talking about topical events like in the space and there's a lot of hashtags and it links to an article and there's just there's no human emotion in the tweet it's it's automated it's uh i don't know i thought it was obvious but since i guess i work in the space it might not be obvious to some but you would say like a, a, a good portion of a twitter campaign has automated tweets it's just if it's completely lacking of the human element then there's a problem yeah yeah, if there's too much automation, then that just means that they're like, oh, we went to Hootsuite. That's good. We we've loaded preloaded tweets. We're good on that. And you know, Hootsuite. So yeah, Hootsuite, Hootsuite, Hootsuite is allows you. You know, you have that program where you can consolidate a bunch of programs in the one. Yeah, Wavebox. Yeah, yeah, Wavebox. It's like Wavebox for social media. So they can like they can control Mailchimp, Twitter, uh, Medium, Reddit, all through like one. Hub. Hashtag, uh, we are yeah. not you sponsored post, by Hootsuite. You post no. something one time and it posts all over the internet, Corey. And then if you pay for the premium, you can have like hundreds of accounts, hundreds of accounts. Oh, so it's like a syndication place. Right. Like, so permission. Link, link all your accounts, say one message, and it pushes it out to all the appropriate places. Yeah. Like the last crypto company I was at, I was like, you guys shouldn't do that. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're 31 years old. So they, they did that. And... and they're out of business. Yeah. So <laughs> like, <laughs> like if you go to MyCrypto, MyCrypto, there are human elements. They are talking about current events. They're talking about PSAs, what's going on in the company. You can tell. Yeah. They I'm accidentally talking with them all the time. I'm in a Slack. Yeah. Talking with them. Right. So, I mean, you could spend five minutes and see, oh, there's someone behind the yeah. wheel at MyCrypto. This is a little Sweet off. Uh, I don't know. Where's Scott Nelson at? Where's Vinay at? Where are the videos? Where's the Reddits? Where's the Where's the Twitters? Um, well, I guess you guys in, have, in Vinay's uh, defense, I guess he was he was. It seemed as though he was an advisor because they wanted to use Materium, and Materium seems to have quite a bit of backing. I I I know Vinay, but he he really pushed it. Like he was he was like the Materium guys really understand what's yeah. going on. It's going to be a big deal. When we interviewed him on the show, Do you guys ever fear that? Um, 
This is a little off topic. Do you ever fear that you're going to accidentally share a link from Pornhub? No. On a public social media site? Why do you feel like you're going to do that? I just feel like it's too easy. Like you to copy do. and pasting links from Pornhub regularly? No. Just no. Just like in your clipboard? I, I do, like just generally? I do copy and paste things regularly. I feel like it's just a slip of the finger. You're one slip of the finger away from, from ruining your life. Why? If you just well, no, have it like no, up no. in your desktop and just like it's a, oh I accidentally copied that URL to Pornhub that's always on my desktop. Like what's going on well, in your life? Well, wait a second. I feel some judgment in your Oh yeah, it's coming. It's voice, coming harsh, harsh but white privilege judgment coming at you. All I'm saying is is like, okay, so you're watching a video and then they have a share huge share button on the bottom of the video, and I can only think to myself, Oh who's sharing porn links? Yeah, I don't know. And then who's commenting on porn? And, I mean that's that's the same there is a demographic of people doing these things. One, there's a lot yeah, of comments. Who's commenting, and why does why does your profile picture always have to be more porn? The comments yeah. help though. Do, like if one they, guy if one guy comments on a wait. video and says, "Hey man, this guy never takes off his boots the entire video." I'm like, "Oh, thanks for letting <laughs> me out. I move on to the next video." Thanks for letting me know that. That's yeah. strange. It's not what I'm into. Yeah, I just fear like that's one of my fears is is sharing a porn link on accident. And then a second fear is like I'm taking my personal laptop into a work situation and I was watching porn the night before and I open it up and plug it in for a presentation and it's just like bam, titties. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's a that's a that's an internal fear of every man. In the face. And like they're like, I thought we were here to talk about uh process management, not pussy management, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, damn, fired. And that's it. Like I've Or promoted. <laughs> Depending on where you work. Sorry. What made you uh shift to such a topic? Uh because yeah, Chelan was talking about like automating messages and then I was like, oh man, I copy links a lot when I'm doing when I'm trying to like schedule out posts and and then it just went down a rabbit hole. It was like, man, what if I was watching a video and I accidentally I didn't know what was on my clipboard, I accidentally linked it and then like in most of these services, they have an auto auto link shortener. And so when you put a link in there, it shortens the link automatically real quick. So you wouldn't catch the Pornhub link, but you would just tweet it out. And then if you pay premium, you tweet it out. If All right, you pay well, premium, you tweet it out on like 200 different accounts and you just be spreading porn. It's just, it was a, it was a fear. That's I all. can think of worse things. It. Yeah, like the like the sweet bridge Twitter is like, hey, uh, hashtag blockchain can build faith and hashtag food labels through provenance amount of hashtag transparency across the whole hashtag supply chain. And then there's that shortened link buff.ly to FNQ with like a woman holding a pot. Like what the fuck does that mean? It's automated. Yeah. No one liked it. No one retweeted it. Um, they're like, they've been raising money since like a couple of weeks ago if they're not still doing it. Well, he's he was on our show, episode one sixty two. It's been a while. Who was that? CEO. Yeah, solo. The CEO was on our show back in October of two thousand seventeen. Was it an announcement or was it a main show? No, it was a main show. Mr. Nielsen. Oh, I missed that upon one. I wasn't on that one. Of Benehuta. Huta. Benehuta. I mean, you might have been. It was a long time ago. Who knows? I don't remember it. But, but it, it was a hot shit in the streets, so he was on our show. Corey, were we going to talk about open financial systems? Were we? Yeah, I remember the article that you posted. It was a third one. I was a little bit intimidated. Oh, the Pantera, the Medium uh, article, master's and thesis. Medium told me, yeah, Medium told me it was thirty-two minute long read, and I was like, "What? Nobody has time for a thirty-two minute long show. I'm gonna go watch a thirty minute show." <laughs> I ain't reading for thirty minutes. I'm watching for thirty minutes. So, um, you want to talk about that, right? Or I want to talk about it, but then you you said yes. What are we yeah. talking about? It's like the the Joey Krug posted a medium article that's like a called it a thesis if you want to call it. Just a really long uh thought on like it of a lot of the things that he's like of what's currently going on, what what he thinks will happen in the future. Uh kind of what, what we've set the stage for, so on and so forth. And it's it's a good read. I mean, it's definitely like a this is what Pantera is investing in type of scenario. Uh but he is for someone who's relatively uninitiated, he does a really good job of setting the stage of what the point is or what a good portion of the people who are in the space think the point is, at least in the Ethereum community for that matter. After reading that, 
are you I, I'm starting to believe that the majors are really gonna only push this thing for at least another decade. What do you mean? Like Bitcoin and Ether and I don't know about like Litecoin's kind of me. But push the advancement of the tech and the advancement of the ecosystem, if you will. We've said it a lot in that in that article. We're laying a lot of like we had that argument last episode, I think, where we discussed like how is this different than Twitter blowing up overnight, right? It's because we're building a lot of infrastructure. And he talks about how that infrastructure is being built and the time frames associated with like how long it takes for that to be to be built. And yeah, it can be faster because we have the internet to leverage, whereas beforehand we didn't. But it's drastically different. And he, I think he does a good job of explaining how it is different. We'll put it in the show notes or something, maybe if we remember. Yeah, if we thesis. remember, it'll be in the Look show notes. Pantera thesis, and that's not like, you know, the band Pantera. The Pantera yeah. capital? I mean, yeah, he says it, it's the early beginnings of a revolution of the entire financial system. Where have we heard that before? Well, it's, I mean, is it, why, why isn't it? Like, I, I think he does a good job of um, talking about how, like, you can build whatever you want. Like, we haven't had a lot of innovation in, like the financial tools that are available to people. We've made the access and speed in which we use those tools drastically different with the internet, but they, like creating a new derivative or, or, or like thing that you can do in the financial system wasn't really done. It's just the, the frequency in which they were done and the infrastructure around doing them changed. And this new technology is allowing anyone to create any financial tool they want. Now, a lot of that's going to suck and isn't going to work, but you're seeing a rapid innovation of like people building these things themselves and experimenting with what could potentially be done with, you know, big M money. Mm -hmm. And, big and that's going to be, up. that's going to be cool. It's going to be, it's there, there is a revolution there in a sense that like you have a lot of people building new things, which introduces a lot of new ways of moving value around the internet and creating wealth in places that we didn't know existed. This is an interesting quote. Why would someone build on top of a protocol instead of a traditional centralized company? Side note, DAP is the new horseless carriage. A few years from now, they'll just be called apps. As opposed to just making a centralized company, there's two answers, lower fees and regulatory advantages slash unbundling. So I mean, we, we've talked about this for months. He's just, he he's putting it more eloquently than we have. He put it in a long form thing that yeah. kind of gave like a nice introduction for those who didn't like who weren't initiated don't have this understanding already and explained a lot of things in detail and gave gave examples and granted i would imagine all the examples he gave are things that he's investing in i would be heavily surprised if that's not the case like i agree that like right now who like who is determining who are crypto famous what companies are thriving it's all internal like there's Joe Blow isn't making Bat famous or Jimmy Song famous. It's everyone's boosting themselves, and I agree that the market is a beauty contest that is pricing based off brand, like he said, as opposed to utility. So right now it's just like we don't care about the functionality of it. We're just going by oh we're, we're pumping up the idea before things are shipped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people are buying change. into like what could be as opposed to what is. Yeah, that needs to change. Uh, yes and no. It's no different than what goes on in a traditional world. I think no, no, I, I no, think no, we're being exposed true. to that traditional world, whereas previously we never had the opportunity to. Flavor, but when you invest in a company, you're investing what they say they're gonna do. No, like CES, like Samsung has their new phones. Oh, guess what? It ships next month. Next month, you don't have to wait three three years. Yeah, for... but like you're like all of the startup VC shit that we were never exposed to previously is a bunch of people with an idea and then they, they convince some rich dude or a rich company who, who likes to invest in new ideas to give them money to build it. I mean, we just never, we were never in that, that place to, to have that exposure to that type of thing. And now it's been almost commoditized. Yeah. The and product never matches the prototype though. No, never does. Never does. Like I, I've had a lot of ideas and what ended up like the, the few ideas that actually turned into something didn't look like the original idea, that's for sure. I, I think that's, and that's why I think Andreas is like really the only person in the space I like because his fame comes from people not attached to the industry. It's just people that want to learn more. 
I felt like, oh, this guy is a good actor. He's an educator. He's just a. He's, he's just a, he has, That's it. He has no agenda, or or mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And that's what we need. Yeah, but you can't invest in Andreas. Uh, I, I'm, sure, I'm not talking oh, about investors. I'm talking Andreas about the token. <laughs> I'm sure no. he'd go just full on for that. Yeah, I, I, want, I want somebody who's shopping for browsers right now and has no affiliation with crypto, and they're like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go with the Brave browser for these number of reasons and he downloads brave and he might not have a coinbase account or whatever he just believes it's the best browser that's what we need is brave the best browser no i'm using firefox i'm not switching to brave (laughs) but i have that and i hope it it, it's two dollars a token you don't need people like me people like me and like insiders we're not going to push bat to mass adoption it needs to be the other people. It needs to be brave. I mean, I mean, it needs to be the company that's using the token to get rid of ads, and while right. also like giving money to content producers. And that, and that, and if you're using Brave and they and they they make that user experience nice and seamless, then that happens automatically just based on the growth of Brave. Uh, and it's just Should. I don't know. You need stable coins for that, so people can stop thinking about price and they can start thinking about the utility part. We have stable coins. Yeah. Speaking of adoption, I, oh, I know it awesome needs to be money. stable coin. It Ask needs to be a stable coin. Crypto, we could do that now. What'd you say? We can call someone and ask them if they take crypto. Yeah, they'd actually I mean, like be responsive to it and be like, "What's crypto or what's Bitcoin?" If you we called chat, Burger like, King like two hundred episodes ago, yeah. well, they just lie. No, she was. She didn't. She didn't lie. She's like, I don't know what that is. What's that? And D was like, talking about the shitty ass explanation of like, it's no, she uh, was, money. D was like, uh, hey, it's money. Like, oh yeah, we take money. Come, come down yeah. with your money. That was the point. Of, that was the point <laughs> of the question. Um, no, we probably should. Well, I could come down there with wampum and be like, hey, this is money. You take wampum. It's money. What is uh, wampum? Apache. I don't know. It's like what Apaches took for Arrowhead <laughs> or something. I don't know. That's basically <laughs> money, but they're not going to take it for a Big Mac. I got these Wampa from a garage sale. Here's a Can London Bridge that? token. Can I get a Whopper, please? Uh, sir, we do take the Whopper, but uh, we're only going to be giving you a um, Buffalo Hide. It's very <laughs> weird. We've been asking for someone to bring in the Whopper so we can get rid of this Buffalo Hide. So, no, I'm kidding. That's messed up. I don't even know if they fucked with Buffalo like that. So, anyways. Or was it Bison? Which one of those fuckers is extinct? Bison, right? No? Uh, I feel like Bison's not extinct because I feel like I hear Joe Rogan saying, like, I'm eating some Bison this weekend. Uh, I think Bison and I don't hot think sauce. either are extinct. I don't know where you're getting that information. You're right. Anyway. Neither one of them were extinct. I, I don't know. I, I, I have this overall sentiment of, like... Would you eat a meerkat? Sure. I'll eat anything. Okay. I don't. I'm not Fried excited about things. anything right now. Um, you're not excited about anything. Not, not really. I've just Ooh, heard. Not, I think. I think I'm. I'm anything. not falling into the cello boat, but like I've heard it all. I've heard it all multiple times. I was about to say, Corey. Yeah. I just made some room on my boat. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm, are getting I'm, tainted. I've been in this a little. I while. still feel like it's like this isn't going anywhere. It's going to be around for a long time. But I I don't I when I peruse Reddit or get online and I see I see articles I don't dig into the article anymore because I assume it's just going to be like the surface level hype train that I've been getting over the past year, mm-hmm. and I, the only th- time that I get excited about something is when I'm talking to people, like real people in communities who who have something and I see a use case and I can I can interact with it and play with it and do something, that that gets me excited and you don't you just don't see a lot of it. No. I think Maybe I need to get, get back out and like go into like, meetups and and stuff like that a little more. Well, I, I think this the narrative hasn't changed. It was just people were distracted by the price volatility, and now that the price is boring, now everybody else is realizing, oh, okay, township hall meeting one point nine eight B is happening on Tuesday. Were Ooh. they blinded by the light? Yes, that's a good way to put it. And I'm in the space. I'm not. I'm not. No one's got dog in the space, but it was never a sexy space to begin with. Vitalik talking about sharding 2.0 was never mind blowingly exciting. I think I get excited about that. See, that's I know you're you're well. I'm you're, a tech nerd. I'm I'm definitely a minority here, right? Like I I I 
I love the tech and cool ways in which you can build it to do new things that work better. That's what I get. That's what like I'm looking forward to is seeing these these things come to light so that the uh, like the infrastructure level grows and spreads and so on and so forth. But I I am not the normal person when it comes to that. But it's like it's like you know my wife is excited about the Galaxy 10, but she she doesn't know how, like how the innards work and the motherboards. She's just excited about the tech part. It's sexy. Yeah, it's got a sexy screen. Sharding 2.0 has a sexy inner. They bow bow. Speaking of sharding, right? In Constantinople, Const- Constantinople, 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 Constantinople's like it's right around the corner. Yeah, it's on the test net. It should be coming around. Let me check the. Uh, yeah. Current, I read uh, my stuff. crypto's primer, and if you are a holder of ether, you need to do no things. Everything's gonna just go smooth. Don't worry about it. But the more involved you are in crypto, um, the more you need to know what's going on. So, cello, you're good. I'm good now because I'm not involved in anything. I just own stuff. And but Corey, you need to you need to know your shit. So. Oh, hey, who do we got we a caller? Oh yeah, good day. What do we got? What's your name? Where are you from? Who are you? Not, not Lam. I'm the I uh from uh, down on Mill. You want to talk about Wesley Snipes? Uh, Whoa, are you out of air? Wesley Snipes, Snipes. Wesley Snipes. Uh, not Wesley Festival. Uh, so I might have to meet the mic once in a while. Sorry. That's no all problem. Good. Do you have any what questions? Do you, you have something to say? Outside? You got the floor. So uh, I'm interested to know where the update on Ronnie is. Ooh. Oh, the Ronnie Moaz update. Last I heard, he's yeah, getting yeah. Injun- there's an injunction on him, and he's uh, flipping out. But I don't know. Do we have anything that we could look at? Like immediately, we hadn't really been following Ronnie. I know uh, we got Tone Vase threw some shade at us. I remember that saying that he uh, he is the only person who has properly handled Ronnie in an interview and dissed us. Oh, you mean like not answering, asking many real questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys, you guys called him out on his shit. I think that's fine. I think he's just, yeah, he's just... <laughs> we just, we just asked, I, I think the doing. interview just basically asked him normal questions and didn't didn't try and like, and when he didn't give an answer, we're like, hey, you didn't answer that question. Can you answer the question? And he was like, go fuck yourself. And that was, that was the end of the interview. Yeah. Like, we never got anywhere. He just... It was great. I loved it. And and since then we've been involved at least in the, in the in the in the Twitter circles with a lot of the stuff, and it doesn't look much better for him. But I haven't really been following because it's just like I don't want to spend my yeah. time trying to follow people like that. Yeah, we kind of distance ourselves from that after he said he was going to sue us publicly, and we were like, "Oh, great! Well, he, he we has nothing to sue us for, but that's just a headache if he does." So we kind of distance ourselves and kind of let him dig himself into a hole. Um, pun, pun, pun intended. intended. Pun in, yeah. That was definitely. <laughs> and, yeah, we've gotten yeah. DMs from him. We they multiple people have reached out to us. We've just been radio silent. Yeah, because all we did was ask him very common questions and or very common sense questions, and he decided to tell us to go fuck ourselves. So we were like, okay, well. Uh, I know Ray uh, Ray Redacted has been following it a lot closer than we have. Um, he's been, he's been kind of keeping track with things. Uh, if you're if you're in the Slack, I definitely uh, he, I DM him or ask him in the general channel what the updates are. Yeah, can... yeah, I, I saw some of that stuff he's been posting, so that's kind of why I was most curious to know. I haven't been following it to be honest. Like, I don't like it's 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 draining to follow such like a. a, a, a a person like that like the way that he conducts himself is just emotionally draining and he does it on purpose i think that's been a lot of a tactic in which he does things yeah, uh, yeah you guys definitely yeah, have the uh the interview very well i think thank you thank it's, you uh our social channels are blowing up i can't even follow it <laughs> we got we got like 45 like involved in some like retweet battle or something like that of like 45 mm-hmm. or 60 tweets <laughs> yesterday yeah, so, like our social is... so, we have a social media channel in the slack that like that but hits anything where someone mentions our name and it was just blowing up. So I thought like the Slack was blowing up and people are talking. And I, I was like, oh no, chance. just that. Did, were, did, were you one of Ronnie's subscribers by chance? No, just on no. Slack and just uh, listen to the podcast every you know, couple of weeks if I can. Oh, okay. 
I was just wondering, like, the, the psyche of someone who gives someone money who seems so, I don't know, off kilter? When Usually when you're giving someone money for financial advice, you'd expect them to be kind of locked tight. But this guy sends out emails to his subscribers saying things like, oh, I'm just, I was so stressed out I wanted to kill myself the other day. And I'm just thinking, like, I don't uh, think he was always like that. I think pretty sure he's been, you know, he hit a downward spiral over the past yeah. couple of months. Okay. How, do we, how do we feel about that, though? Like, we always tell people to do their own due diligence. How do you guys feel about do the do? Someone's paying somebody money to do the diligence for them. They're paying, they they're get, paying for a report of someone that they that kind of. Yeah, sure. I, no, I feel like any subscriber of, of his isn't doing due diligence on the coin. They're, they're, they're paying to offload the work to Ronnie. And then if the results are unfavorable, you might end up in a situation like this. It kind of goes against everything that we, we preach on the show. Or no. Yeah, is I mean, it, it's it, like people that get into crypto, it's like you got to be secure. And if people are just paying, like they think it's financial advice, and they're going to jump down that hole, well, they got to be prepared for the risk. Right. So you agree with me. That's, I, I kind of feel like it goes against the yeah. philosophy of the space as a whole. But you know? we, so what we yeah. saw last year with the ICO boom and the, and the massive hype around stuff was people were not getting in the space for that. They were getting into it to try and get like the ridiculous 100x returns that they saw other people get. They didn't care. They wanted to make money. No. Yeah, they just want to throw, throw money on it and expect that it's going to come back. And, that's, and a it, bunch of people got burned. Yeah, and, and it's, it, if you are one of those people and you don't understand how to think about this concept yeah. and someone's offering you like, uh, like pay you know a hundred bucks a month to I don't I'm just making up numbers to like get this report because I'm an expert in this and I'm gonna give you like yeah. a bunch of due diligence that I personally do so I might as well sell it too then that seems reasonable that seems like a like a, a turnaround of of good money an investment of good money because they're you're gonna get a bunch of like um, due diligence from someone who's already doing it you're just paying for them to share it with you and that's what I think a lot of people are doing because they don't want to spend the time doing it themselves they'd rather just stand on the on the backs of people who are doing it and it never ends well and that's 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 like the investment community in a nutshell i i I admit that's maybe a too harsh of a statement there are a lot of people who do that well it's too volatile the market's too volatile to be that kind of figure well that's what they're betting on they like that volatility they just hoped it went the other way yeah the thing that i I mean if it went up and everybody won they wouldn't be complaining yeah yeah they'd be he'd be a he'd be a king and yeah yeah the thing that I don't understand now more. I used to defend it, but now I'm kind of t- on the other side of it is if you've been doing all this hard work and you've got some secret juice, like you figured out some secret math juice that you're making a lot of money off of any market. Why are you selling your secret juice? You should just not and own a boat and be happy with your secret juice. Like uh, yeah, people with money want more money. Coca-Cola isn't going around the world saying, hey, you know that secret formula we've talked about all this time? Here you go. Well, the thing about to it for $15 a month. The thing like, about an algorithm, like especially in, in like undeterministic financial markets, like you can't you you can only what you're doing is you're finding things that predict the behavior of what everyone else is doing. And if you find something that's unique that no one else is doing and, and you can make money from it, by sharing that information, your your lowering the effectiveness of that algorithm because more people will be doing it which means you're no longer capturing that behavior yeah right yourself and if a lot of people do it then you just get completely washed out and it no longer works at all because everyone's doing it and because like these markets are built on human emotion and uh, and rationality and things like that which are not deterministic and so you're using machines and machine learning things like that to find some weird hole that no one else has seen based on however you build those those algorithms and then if everyone does it then you 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 lose that edge and that's kind of the the idea of all that stuff and so what he was doing was not sharing the methodology he was sharing the results of the methodology of and saying you know and and that may have boosted his signal in a lot of ways or because he he did it first he He did it first right of course it's speculation Hmm. but like people who have unique algorithms that take advantage of an aspect of a market that no one else is doing they're not sharing that shit it took yeah. me 15 years to engineer you bastard well it's, it's just it, like what does it by hand like that none of the stuff of what he said from like a machine learning perspective or yeah, that, data science was thing. not impressive 
he's like, oh, I, I'm, I'm earning all of this fucking money, but uh, I'm the one that's replying to all of my emails, right? <laughs> I'm doing all this work. Fucking bullshit. There's no way that happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> so uh, uh, what else do you like do? You guys handled the interview really well, so as, uh, yeah, props. What are your what are your feelings about what is your sentiment over uh, the whole blockchain space this this year this coming this coming year? I've been trying to ask people how they feel things are going to go this year. I think it's I think it's a tricky one. I think uh, a friend of mine uh, introduced me to blockchain in 2013, uh, 2014, because um, we were talk, talking about transferring money to my cousins from Australia to Canada, and uh, doing it through a bank transfer in Australia is quite expensive because uh, you we've got to pay, and then the recipient also has to pay. And so I kind of got into Bitcoin back then and I thought, oh, this is a great idea. And then obviously, you know, you see it on Silk Road and the price goes up and the price goes down. So I think watching that space and coming into it now with all of these shit coins and all of these other coins, I think I think this kind of, you know, 12 to 24 month period really has to be the point at which something changes and someone comes through with a product. You know, like I know, uh, Petty, you're working with Status and, you know, they've got apps coming out and everything else like that. I'm not fully up to speed with all of them, but... I think seeing more and more of the apps actually get into the market um, will be a game changer. But I think uh, on I think last week's podcast or two weeks ago, you were talking about how institutionally banks are getting on blockchain and introducing blockchain into their day-to-day tech. I think it's just going to make life easier, even if we don't see it. You know, so like my mum and dad don't necessarily know how it works, but it makes their transactions faster. I think it's going to make things easier, but. Uh, I don't know. Who knows, really? I'm curious to see. I, I agree with everything you just said. I'm curious. Like, there's there's difficulties in a lot of these things. Do the people, if we make things better for the services we already use, centralized services, and make it faster, does that savings or efficiency? Do you think they'll push it to the user, or they'll capture it no. themselves? No. That no, they'll capture it themselves because they want money. Yeah, that's right. that's with audits, right? That's where that, maximize constant, profit. That constant. Yeah, yeah. If they build it, if they if they get you know, combine open source software with their own proprietary software, they're just going to, you know, they, they always want money. Like you said, they just want to return money to the shares, shareholders. Something yeah. that I've experienced from, like, trying to get apps into the stores is, um, we, like, we're, we're fighting an uphill battle in terms of trying to get things Guys, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm going to run, but I'll sources. listen to you guys online. All right. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, man. Cheers. Peace out. Uh, what I was saying is like the, the, the official sources or, or, or channels in which you have to publish things is difficult to get cryptocurrency apps into, right? Like think about trying to advertise nowadays. Google blocks basically anything that has anything to do with blockchain or Facebook. Um, I think it was something recently that I saw maybe this morning is that like Google now blocks anything that has Ethereum in it as an ad. Uh, so like it's difficult for crypto companies to to broadcast their message to people, to like the general public. So you're, you're relegated to this small circle of individuals who are really pumped about the tech. As well as like, if I want to push my app to the app store, that's that's now becoming difficult. It's to, because the, they're censoring things. So Samurai Wallet basically had to take away a lot of their uh, very privacy forward features because uh, the Google Play App Store forced them to because they didn't like the way they did things. And so you then have to publish your non-nerfed application through alternative channels, which are ripe with ways in which people can um, like get malicious software onto your phone. So if you load an app on your phone from just a, a, an arbitrary link as opposed to through the Play Store, then you have no real good way of knowing whether or not that app has been has malicious code on it, or it's the mm-hmm. app you want to have, because there's 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 not as many checks and balances. You basically have to trust the source in which you download it from, usually the official website, so on and so forth. But like, that's the difficulties we're going to be facing as decentralized apps with very, very, very forward, like, security and privacy features that aren't going to be able to be going through the app store unless the app stores change. Okay, that's that, that's a very interesting point. It kind of overlaps with something that I talked about on just the headers. Um, And that's, we're screaming for decentralization, yet it's almost like we we need centralization at some point. Like, we need entities to trust. 
Well, then it'll, it'll never be a financial revolution unless Google lets us. Well, it's not. It's not like it's not a binary thing, right? Centralization and decentralization refers to something. It's right? a like, spectrum. If you think about block, the decentralized blockchain software, whatever the hell we want to call it, right? Like the the way in which the um, centralized blockchain. thing blockchain. that's agreed upon is decentralized. But it, like, if you think about it from another perspective, it's a centralization of information. Like it's the single source of truth that everyone agrees upon. You're just happy with the way it changes because that's done in a decentralized way. So like, you can't just use the term decentralized as a catch-all for everything because it's, it doesn't work that way. It refers to something that you want to be decentralized, which in some ways, shapes or forms centralizes some other thing. And so like yeah, people who just say the words don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Voorhees said something like, you can't say blockchain is fun. You have to specify like, oh, you mean the Ethereum blockchain? What are you talking about? You can't just generalize. I, and so yeah. like, we're like, and, and that's what you hear. And that's what we heard a lot. And maybe that narrative will change this year or over time, over the 10 years. Maybe it won't because at the, like, at the end of the day, there's going to be a tremendous amount of people who either don't care or don't have the time to care or just never, were never exposed to it to like, figure yeah. out that they do care but they're going to end up if we want it to be successful interacting and using this technology just like yeah. they interact and use the internet but like maybe never got to the point where they yeah. were exposed to realize that they really give a shit about http or whatever the fuck it is but just like the internet it's gonna i think there's so many um metaphors that are, or alla, allegory is it allegory yeah yeah there's so many allegories that people like to to say that Bitcoin is so akin to the internet, and the one that they don't realize is the one that we're currently going through was that uh, big boom and bust at the end of the millennium, the, the 1999, and everything kind of crashed a lot. Pets.com is kind of the forerunner of that whole crash, and then there's there were just a few winners after that. There weren't many winners after that. There were just you know Amazon stuck around dug their heels in google did but that's about it i don't know if i can even name any other companies that really you know there really haven't been super massive heavy hitters of the internet well no i'll take that back you know, there's facebook netflix google all kinds of companies that you know make a smashing living off you know the internet, but... uh, something completely different uh like that's got that kind of ties in here is that uh there's a you lot of really subtle link? details oh. that you can't get wrong when building this stuff. Um, yeah. Take, for instance, there's an article that came out that... Um, so when you sign a message using your, using your private key, um, in the process of, of signing it, you have a, what's called a nonce, which is basically like a, just a number. That, so like a rando. rando. Random number. And... How you use that random number if, if used incorrectly with the signature. So if you do the implementation of the signature scheme when you're signing transactions for any blockchain, at least ones that use ECDSA, um, then if you do that, like choosing the nonce incorrectly or, or not, not not you know big enough in terms of the size of the size of the number, um, then a lot of attacks can take place in which people can recover your private key. Like, say, if you use the same nonce, I can get your private key. And now wallets do this automatically. Like, the wallet softwares and the standard implementation of these things do this automatically. But if you try and do it yourself, or, for instance, one of the early software implementations didn't do this correctly, you can just recover the private keys that are on the blockchain because they're on, like, when you, when you sign a transaction, you reveal your public key. And then people can then, and that's on the, that's on the Bitcoin blockchain or Ethereum blockchain. Then... Your, your private keys are just basically in a, in a in a immutable ledger for the for the world to see. And if you maintain, if you hold crypto in those private keys, like using those private keys, then they're just rot for discovery. And this is a paper that basically showed that you can do this. They went through the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple blockchains and found all of the bad implementations that did this, or all the signatures that were created from bad implementations, and got the private keys in a lot of ways. Um, Luckily, that wasn't that big of a deal, and they, they did it in a research like academic setting, so they you know disclosed to everyone that they could, so on and so forth. But like, it's the concept here is that very, very, very subtle things with cryptography and bad implementations 
um, can lead to drastic consequences. And like, should people have to care about that? Is that something that regular people should should worry about? No, that's an engineering problem, an academic problem. But like, it's the foundational part of how all of these systems work. Cryptographic mm-hmm. signatures and ECTSA and and things like that are, are like foundational to how these things are built. And if that's done improperly, based on and and there's still a lot of research going on and to make sure that like things are secure, then you can bring the whole system down. And so like it's gonna be a while until we have really strong guarantees that people can't do that. And then eventually those aren't gonna hold because technology changes and cryptography changes. Those strong guarantees are gonna be some regulatory system coming in and saying, Don't do that. Well then I mean <laughs> how did, what, re, how what, what regulatory work. system because this is a global a it's a global infrastructure that isn't subject to any jurisdiction mm. we have a caller who's calling in oh it's just uh, Matt Way I'm just calling back in oh, sorry guys back. I'm just, just working <laughs> at a festival and this is uh, pretty much the only time that I can catch you guys because it's about 3am uh, here so Oh, so yeah. that, uh, jump that's in, jump I mean. out. So I apologize for the interruption. So that's the reason for going for festivals is that you're staying up late anyway. You can call into the Bitcoin podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Technically, I, I'm actually uh, getting paid to be on this call. So, you know, got to make it worth it while it's worth it's well. Getting Hard paid to call into oh. the Bitcoin podcast. What a life. That we don't even get festival. paid. <laughs> hey, I got a question for you, Matt. Yeah. Uh, are you ever scared that you're accidentally going to share a Pornhub link somewhere on a public facing social media platform? Am I worried? Yeah, it seems like a it could be possible, and it's just a growing fear of mine. Is and... it something that's, uh, that's happened to you, and you're worried that it's going to happen to me? No. Nope. Am I missing something in this? No, no he's just no. being Dimitric and asking really weird questions about um, <laughs> sharing porn accidentally. No, I'm yeah, no. yeah, just with some guy who doesn't know and Tarek's questions, I guess. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's the share button, it's there, it's not small, it could be an accidental thing. It's just, it's just a growing fear. I feel like that might be a joke I from the developers of the web pages. That means, that means that you're uh, you're assuming that I'm signed into Facebook while on that on that website and then I hit share, right? You have to double uh, confirm though. It share, it opens up a prompt screen, then you would have to confirm it again. How do you yeah, know that? I, I've never done it, so I wouldn't know. Well, that's, yeah. that's how that. Yeah, Cholo, how do you know that? Work. <laughs> Very telling, <laughs> Cholo. Oh, because I was like, "Hey, I want to share this." Mm, no second thoughts. Who are you going to share it with? Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. You don't have porn watching communities that you like. You, you share you know, all the good the good stuff that you found. Those are double prompts. Yeah, that, yeah that's that's my other Slack channel. Is uh, one TBT and then the other one's like uh, <laughs> sharing porn links with my mates. And then you could have it like don't, when you click those share buttons, you can click to share it to a group or share it to your wall, right? Or they don't, there's no wall anymore, but you share it to your page or you share it to a group. I get, I'm, I can guarantee right now there's probably some like porn curation group on Facebook of people, and it's got way more people in it than it should. The question people... is are there any token curated registries of quality porn sites? Like has there has the blockchain space grown enough to where those those are now a part of like things you can do? What do you mean, like a utility token for porn? Yeah, like you've seen token curated registries of like your curating material. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, uh, does that does that does that that mean adoption? Like, is that is that does that there's stroken tokens broad adoption? (laughs) Strokentokens.com. You've been following Ken. And they're accepting Neo and Monero and EOS. Oh, and Tron. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, Tron to the moon, right? Oh, man. Sorry, guys. I I just, I didn't mean to derail. I thought it was going to come. What is it? No, look, I, I think it's a very valid question. You know? Yeah, I thought so too. What are you guys' biggest fears? It's a good, let's go down this don't track. En- don't encourage them. No, I'm talking, <laughs> Matt. Not that's not to you. That's to Corey and Chell oh, or anybody that wants to answer. I don't have any yeah. fears, man. Oh, you're fucking fearless. Yeah, right. Get out of here. <laughs> I have a feeling that the housing market is going to crash, and my house that I pay for is going to be worthless. But I have this massive mortgage. Why don't 
Why don't you live in Texas? That's a real fear. Why don't I live in Texas? Because I moved to Maryland because that's where the jobs were. And then by happenstance, <laughs> I found a job that doesn't require me to live in Maryland. Yeah. I always wonder. Before I did that, that, I bought a house. Remote workers that live on the East Coast. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, no, no, no. If I had to redo it, I would have had a status job. I never would have left Texas other than my wife. My wife probably would have made me leave Texas. You could have a say, house like, with a moat. Right like now. Cobwebs <laughs> or something. Yeah. That's what you're going to say. Like, I'm scared of feral dogs. But no, you like went straight deep with it. You know, uh, I'm an, that's a, I guess that means I'm an adult. I'm a grown ass man. So you about have to have Every man with children has fears. Uh, you know that movie Fearless with Jet Li? That was an autobiography based on me. Fearless. That's me. Oh, yeah? Do you jump and float through the air, too, with rubber swords? I don't fear gravity, so it, it would make sense. Oh. I got I got one for you. All right. Do you ever, do you ever get worried, right, when you're copying in a Bitcoin address? Do you yes. accidentally hit a key and you don't realize and you send it to the wrong address? Yes. Well, do I have news for you? Because... Bitcoin addresses are checksummed. Yeah. So if you get one character wrong, um, it won't be a successful transaction ever. It won't go to an address. The Bitcoin nodes will check. So like the last, I think, I don't know. That was last episode. Four, three, three or four bytes of the code is actually the checksum of the public mm-hmm. key. And so it takes that off, checks it to make sure that the key is correct based on the previous part of the thing. And if it's not, it'll reject the transaction. So it'll just sit in the mempool for a while and then get rejected at some point, and, then and you'll rejected. be fine. Now, Ethereum well, addresses uh, do not do that. That's one fear. Yeah. Why don't Ethereum addresses do that? Uh, there's, not... been check- they, they, there's a checksum associated with the capitalization of the letters, and so there is a, a form of checksumming, but it doesn't do it the same way. It's not as robust. Why they did it, um, I'm not sure, to be honest. I want to interview someone who's lost so much Ethereum. Because they got one character wrong. Well, you'll never get to interview them because they dove off a cliff. (laughs) (laughs) They did a nosedive (laughs) off of a bridge. So many stupid ways to lose money in the space is crazy. Yeah. It's Pirates of the Dark Water. The other fear that I have is is that my my antivirus or whatever you, my computer, doesn't update and that uh, I've accidentally copied the wrong address. Well, I haven't copied the wrong address. My, you know, computer's been compromised, and I paste an address in, and it's wrong. I think that's an irrational fear because I'm relatively, you know, safe when it comes to antivirus and checking bits and pieces. But I'm always worried that some fucking thing is going to steal my Bitcoin. How many times do you check back and forth when you're like sending a transaction with like the one that you actually put in the <laughs> transaction, off. the one Don't you off. copied? I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll often I'll, I'll copy it. I'll copy it into text. I'll copy it into Word. I'll copy it onto a page. And then usually I'll be like, yeah, okay, I haven't fucked it up. And I, do it. <laughs> I do the same thing. Like I, I still, like I still have that yeah. kind of worry that I've, I've somehow screwed up the copy and pasting method. And not so much that I'm going to lose the money, but more that like I'm not going to get done what I was trying to get done and have to spend the rest of the day figuring <laughs> out why. It's yeah, an inconvenience. The, yeah. the more money you send using crypto, the the more time slows down when you're sending it. Oh, somewhere. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, it's, it's, like, forward. it's so fast yeah. once you actually get the transaction done, but it takes a while to get that transaction done and correct. Yeah. I think um, one point when I, when I used to trade um, many moons ago and some of those transactions were a little bit larger than like, you know, you're sending back and forth PlayStation 4s, right? It's not, they're not tiny transactions, but every time you do it, it's just like, and then people try to talk to you because I'm doing it mobily on my phone because, you know, these exchanges. They have <laughs> yeah. Apps. And then yeah. people are trying to talk to you and you're just like, what, what, what are you? And they're like, D, what are you even listening to us? And I'm like, dude, I am in my own fucking world right now. I just need to make sure I didn't send three PlayStation 4 somewhere and not get them back. <laughs> yeah. All right. So why don't you, like, why don't you... I got some, I got some news for you, D. The, the 60 millionth Litecoin has just been mined and we contributed to that. Ooh, Charlie yeah. Lee must be happy. Yeah, that guy is dancing on the ceiling every night. Only yeah. listening to Lyle Richie. Going to town. 100 of that is owned by less than yeah. like 1.4 million people. So I, Actually, I might do that as, uh, I doubt it, but I would like to um, look at the the distribution of tokens to see like what percentage you know i did that distribution analysis on a lot of the icos to see like what percentage of addresses holds 
uh, what percentage of mm. the tokens. Well, they say 70% yeah, of the total supply is in the hands of less than one-tenth of 1% of the world. Yeah, and so, like, we, we talk about how, like, I mean, granted, it is more inclusive and there is a much, much larger distribution of tokens to, to regular people. But in the end of the day, like, the lion's share of these tokens is in the hands of a very small amount of people across all of every every platform some may be more or less uh better than the others and they're probably all better than the traditional financial system but it's still pretty skewed in terms of like what what small percentage of people owns the massive amount of the actual value yeah Mm. everything that i've ever looked at showed that i mean don't get me wrong ethereum i think made more millionaires than anything ever in the history of the world but there's only like five people that hold the lion's share of everything. Yeah. There's not a lot of people that own a lot of the stuff. But that doesn't change. It doesn't matter what system. That's never going to change. Yeah, I don't so. think it will. I guess there's just, there's, and that's, that's an asymmetry of information in a lot of ways, or like, mm -hmm. or talent, or foresight. And like, yeah. it, not everyone is equal in their ability to evaluate what to buy or have the means and resources to spend that much money on buying it at the same time. And so because of that asymmetry, that's never going away. It's just some people get lucky and then they take that luck and then they reinvest it. And it's just like, that's what venture capitalists do. They keep investing and just like investments pay off over the long term, if you're okay at picking them, right? They just do that, but they're doing it with so much money that their earnings are, are way more than the little 401k putaways that we, that that's yeah, normal. Yeah. Like normal you look scale. back, if you, if you went and bought Bitcoin in 2013, the Australian price, I think it was around 300 Australian dollars of Bitcoin, right? If you're like an institutional investor and you drop 10k on it, it's nothing to you. But then yeah. you look at that, at the value that it went up to last year versus, you know, mums and dads, you know, who might've bought one or two, well, not mums and dads, because they probably didn't know about the tech, but like, you know, people that, you know, your friends, my friends that would have bought in said, I'll buy one or two or three because, you know, we like the tech. We think we're going to go somewhere. And then you make, you know, double the amount of money, but it's still double the amount of money. I mean, yeah. shit, look at Roger Ver. He probably, he, he spent a tremendous amount of money when it was probably sub $1 in Bitcoin. Hmm. There's a, yeah, well, there's a reason that he has as risk, much money right? as he does. And influence is because yeah. he's bought in yeah. really, really, really early. And now I can't speak to like, the, his ability to evaluate whether or not buying in, but he certainly did. And so mm -hmm. he either got lucky or understood something that no one else did at the time. Well, if you ask them, they're not going to, they're going to say they understood. Of course. I mean, I, I'd yeah. say the same thing. I think, yeah. I think it's 50, 50. Yeah. Hmm. Well, do we need to wrap? Yeah. We're about an hour. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks for all it's been lovely yeah. speaking to you. Yeah, your wrap, you, I just want to say I know you guys. Uh, you guys don't. Uh, you said you don't get paid, but I know there's a lot of people in the Bitcoin community that listen. You get a lot of great, great, great guests on, and I just want to say for 2019, I hope you guys keep kicking it in, and I'll be listening. Happy to awesome. have you. Thank you. And if you ever, uh, if you ever find yourself, uh, you know, down in Australia, hit me up. Hell yeah! Hi. We'll get the beer. Oh, do they drink fosters there? Can you, <laughs> no. can you find that uh, the bed? Can you verify? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no. That's definitely my favorite drink. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. nice. I knew nah. it. And we ride around on kangaroos. That's my other thing. <laughs> fosters. Australian for beer. Fosters. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck a shrimp on the barbie. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very Good much. Good eye, mate. Right, guys, peace. Down under. Later, man. Later, bud. <laughs> um, yeah. So just like Matt just called in, you can call in too. The only thing is, is you have to join our Slack by going to the bitcoinpodcast.com or the bitcoinpodcast.network, clicking the button that says Slack, following the easy to follow instructions, and then we'll see you come in and we'll welcome you and ask you your age, sex, and location. <laughs> and this, uh, this episode is brought to you by dingoes. They're a type of dog. <laughs> Wow, that is a terrible accent. So I've been using an Australian accent. I have two Australian cattle dogs, and I've been using one of them as a red healer, and I've been using an Australian accent to like talk as if I'm him because all people who have pets talk as if, like, pretend to talk like they're animals. <laughs> so his Roscoe's yeah, Roscoe's voice is definitely an Australian voice, and I'm getting pretty good at it. But uh, also, 
if you don't want to call in because you're shy or don't have the time because we do this at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays, Eastern time, uh, then you while you're at the podcast website, then you can click on the new donate button, which allows you to, it takes you to a page to currently only donate Ethereum um, and also leave a message for us and become part of the leaderboard, which shows off all the people who've previously donated to us. And you can beat them all by giving us more money than them. Um, and sooner or later, I'll be, I'll be adding all the other coins that other people would like to throw at us. So The incentives for giving us money is you get to brag. Yeah, so. of course. And we get, we're going to use that money to buy beer and uh, continue running the show. Yeah. How are you going to build up an accent, an Australian accent, and then not give it? Oh, I've been doing... I've been building an Australian accent since I was a little kid. So like my parents almost got a job or they got a job that was going to be in Australia. I think it was Sydney. And um, I was so pumped. We were going to be expats in Australia. I was going to go to the land down under. And I started practicing an Australian accent immediately. Uh, This is like when I was maybe 12 or something. Eventually we didn't end up going because we couldn't get uh, some tax thing or it's going to be too expensive or whatever. And I was devastated, but. Um, yeah, yeah, I've been doing an Aust- I've been I've been practicing an Australian accent for quite a long time. <laughs> I'm so glad you a... finally got to get that off your chest. Yeah. It's so just... if I have a black lab, do I have to talk like a black person at my dog? Hey yo, where's the food? I have a black I, lab. I guess if black people talk like do we talk like yeah? I guess yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's cold out here. Let me in, yo. That's that's bad. You, yeah, it is pretty bad. You need to tap into your blackness more, Shelly. Yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty terrible. Yeah. Hey, yo! I can see you thinking hey, to hey, yourself yo. now, like, was that black enough? Well, you know, if my dad wasn't Brian Gumble, I'd have more perspective into the. Your dad was pretty Brian Gumbly. I'm not. I don't. Brian say Gumbly. I'm glad that's you right. said it. I'm glad you said it. I mean, um, All right. anyways, that's the stuff that we do. Um, if you can't follow any of those instructions, you're probably too young to listen to us and we don't know how you found us. So please stop. (laughs) Uh, let's see. Uh, what else do we do? So, uh, if you go to medium.com slash the Bitcoin podcast blog, it'll take you to the publication that we have. Um, mainly just some musings from Corey and myself calling. I recently Uh, posted one about how to manage your private keys a little better. Yep. That was a good one. I like the word musings. I love it. Um, yeah, that you posted one on private key management, what it means. Um, what else do we do? Oh, there's a book. We have a book called uh, Can You Describe Bitcoin, Blockchain, or Ethereum in 10 Words or Less? Uh, we have a trademark question. Uh, we ask all of our guests when we interview them is, is, is to describe these things in 10 words or less because we have a theory that if you can't doctor sue something, you really don't know it well at all. And not a lot of people pass it. Some people do. Uh, some people say off the wall things. It's a very good, I don't know, what would you say? It's a very good journal as to where the ecosystem has been from 2015 to now. Yeah, I'll read one. Um, who should I read it from? Uh, go for it. The book open. One random. Uh, okay, how about in 2015, I asked Tawanda Kembo. CEO of Golix, if he can describe Bitcoin. And he said on June 8th, 2015, that Bitcoin is a technology that can end corruption. Okay. Nice. Or empower it, apparently. Yeah. As we've discussed in the exit scams and so on and so forth. (laughs) That one didn't age well, Tawanda. Sorry. Womp womp. It could. One more. He goes one more. But the, the cool thing about him is like, that's. That's why he got into Bitcoin because he he lives in a country that could benefit from from that. You know, if I asked, you know, a white CEO, he might not be that might not. Why be is he got to be a white guy? Because the Wanda was an African African guy, a black guy. He's saying his eyes the opposite of, I think. I'd say white. Actually, no. Wait, I'm in Corey's camp. Lesbian. Why is it going to be a white? Guy? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Read another one, Chella. Uh, sure. So um, I act. I asked Steve Bossy, the CEO of Polysworn, can can he describe blockchain? And I asked him this exactly a year ago, and he said it, blockchain is a permissionless canvas to build new solutions that don't worry about traditional infrastructure. How many words is that? One, two, three, four, five. He failed. Aww. Yeah, that's a fail. Good answer, but fail. Yeah, that's a fail. 
All right, we um, got to get more guests on so we can keep asking that question so we can make more books. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get you guys some guests. We're just a little bit more picky nowadays, even consi- considering what's uh, uh, been a byproduct of uh, the last little hype cycle there. So, I mean, we can always do a can you describe uh, announcements edition. Ooh. <laughs> Did you <laughs> ask him that question on announcements? <laughs> no. no. Uh, the question I ask on announcements is, is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't? And uh, everyone's, like, blown away by that question. But cello was like perfect. Is, is cello was it you that was like that? Just feels like lazy journalism. No, well, it's no. Not. Corey was asking that on the flagship show, and I was like, "Don't." Do I, that. So I actually got that from um, a show that it was, a, it was a data science show. Um, I don't think they're around anymore, and at the top of my head, I forgot the name of it. But um, he would ask that to all the guests on the show, and I was like, "That's a fantastic way to get to the like to ensure that the people you're interviewing." Um, get to say what they wanted to say despite what you came into the interview wanting to ask them. And it's a way to just cover your bases because you had a lens of what you wanted to get out of them and they came to your show probably to push something or say something or um, like get something into the general public that they feel is important. And it just it gives them an the opportunity to do that in, like a, in a, a nice way. I think everyone should do it. It's, like great. it's a great way to do interviews. I don't mind the questions. I, I feel like that stuff should come up organically. If you do a good job as an interviewer and they do a good job as the interviewee, that the question shouldn't be necessary. What if it's like That's... completely like analogous or like not analogous, but like ancillary to what the conversation led to? If it's a great conversation that led in a lot of weird, weird ways, but they never actually got to talk about the thing they wanted to talk about, it gives them an opportunity. If they felt like it was a good interview, they say, no, we think we covered it all. Yep. I like that question. That's like, you know, you have sex with a girl and like, hey, is there any other positions that we should have did that we didn't get a chance to do? And she that says is. yes. And you're like, hell yeah. Yeah. Why great. would you ask that question? I feel like that's great communication. That's a, I would so be a great communication. Hey, you should do that. I'm going to do that from now yeah. on. Thank you, Shella. Like, I'm going to take that thing routine to my bed. Right. Yeah. I was going to do this or that thing, but you never really did it. And I'm like, well, just got added to the tool set, baby. I'll be uh, stretching. Because I finished and we don't need to do any more. Cello yeah. is a very good lover, as we can see. Yeah. Cello, <laughs> it's cello, a race, cello. and I won, bitch. Hashtag married. It's a race, and I won. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get your game up. As long right. as we're at bed by ten. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up. That's that's a good way to close. All Thank right, you for joining us. TheBitcoinPodcast.com. That's how you find us. Uh, play. Oh. Shout out to Zoe Saldana and Zazie Beats, Carla Lewis. Play.